before we start digging deeper into the iOS frameworks and implementing the code for our sample applications, I wanted to include an overview of Objective-C for C, C Sharp, and Java developers. We'll review the syntax differences between Objective-C and Standard C, and we'll take a look at some of the semantic nuances of working inside Objective-C that go beyond what you might have used in other languages. Finally, we'll take a look at the most used classes provided by the Foundation Framework such as NSObject, NSString, NSArray, and NSDictionary. Objective-C has a number of standard conventions used for file types and file naming, variable and method naming, variable and method declaration, variable referencing, and method invocation. Building applications for iOS, there's a number of different file types that you'll see in practically every Xcode project. Header files, as we already saw, have a .h extension. They include the definition of the public interface for your classes, as well as the definition of any protocols and categories your class exposes. I'll explain protocols and categories in a moment, but you can think of protocols as similar to interfaces in C-sharp and Java, and categories are a feature unique to Objective-C. Your code lives in a .m file. This is equivalent to the .cs file for C-sharp or the .java file for Java. This includes the declaration of any private instance variables, as well as the body of your methods implementing the logic of your app. Throughout iOS, the file type .plist, which is a standardized XML file, is used to hold the configuration data, as well as serialize and deserialize NS dictionary objects to and from file storage. Xcode provides a hierarchical visual editor for editing plist files, or you can edit them as raw XML if you wish. In our Hello World app, we saw the nib file, which has the extension xib. NIMP files contain the raw definition of the layout for a single view. Modern iOS also supports something called storyboards. Storyboards combine the NIMP file contents, your visual layout, with a graphic representation of the flow of your app. When editing a storyboard file, you use Interface Builder to define and customize the layout of your app's views, as well as specify the navigation between the views, defining what Apple calls segways. .framework files are the way in which iOS allows you to access the built-in shared libraries. When you see a framework inside of Xcode, it means not only is the framework being linked in, but also any header files associated with that library are also made available to your methods. iOS also includes support for dynamically loaded libraries that do not include header files of type dylib. An example of this type of file is the built-in zip and unzip support provided by lower levels of the operating system. Image files in an iOS project are almost exclusively provided by including .png files, otherwise known as portable network graphic files. While you can include graphics in other formats such as JPEG, some assets in an iOS application must be provided as PNG, such as your default splash screen, your iTunes artwork, and your icons. And finally, one other type of file you see frequently is the .caf file, which is a core audio file, meaning it contains PCM-encoded audio data that can be used by low-level system routines to play sound effects. And there are many tools that allow you to convert from WAV files and MP3 files and Apple AAC files to CAF files. You only want to use CAF files when you actually want to embed the sound in your application and you want to use the low-level, very fast sound processing logic to be able to play the sounds with a single API call. Most of your code will be divided up between header files and code files. Header files have the extension .h. Inside your header file, you include the public declarations for any properties and methods which your class will expose. Header files also include the definition of any protocols, again similar to interfaces in C-sharp and Java, and categories unique to Objective-C. Typically, your header file also includes references to other system header files by using the pound sign import directive. This is similar to the include statement of C and the using statement of C-sharp. Your code files have an extension of .m. Inside your code files, you define any private properties that are used by your method implementations and the code that defines the logic of your app. Objective-C uses a set of naming conventions which are used consistently across all of Apple's frameworks. I highly recommend that you use the same kind of naming conventions in your code in case you ever decide to open source some part of your code or work on a larger team in which the other developers expect these conventions to be followed. Class names follow the scheme called Pascal casing. This means the first letter of the name is always capitalized, and the first letter of each word within the name is also capitalized, as you see here with this is my class. Properties and methods use a naming scheme called camel casing. This means the first letter is always lowercase, and the first letter of subsequent words within the variable name or method name are capitalized. Variable declaration in Objective-C classes is typically implemented using Objective-C's property mechanism. 
In your header file, you define public properties, and in your code file, you define any properties which are used only by your implementation logic. These are often called private properties. In modern Objective-C, the definition of private properties is done by using what is called the empty category, which we'll see in a moment. The reason the word private on the slide is in quotes is that they are private only by convention. Properties implemented in your .m file in the empty category are not visible to consumers of your class, but if a developer knows the names of those properties, they can access them. Of course, this is bad form, so we recommend you don't do that. Here we can see an example of a public property definition. Whenever you define a property, if it is a simple variable type such as an integer or boolean, you simply use the word at property followed by the data type and then the name of the property in a semicolon. Whenever you define a property that is of an Objective C object type, you have to specify some attributes in parentheses as you can see here. The first attribute, non-atomic, indicates that this variable is not going to be accessed by multiple threads and therefore the compiler can generate more efficient code. For practically everything you do in iOS, you'll just keep typing non-atomic over and over again. Here we can see an example of public property definition. Inside our interface for class 1, we define two properties, int property 1 and int property 2. And we also show two different method definitions. And that's the crux of how Objective-C files are organized. Next up, we'll look at what's inside the files, naming conventions, variable declarations, and so forth.